the amount of time right now that it would take Iran to get a nuclear weapon after they made the decision to do so is frighteningly short, much shorter than the timeline before the nuclear agreement was signed. And, you know, we essentially tested the theory of the opponents of the Iran deal um, because Donald Trump withdrew from it. He levied unilateral sanctions against Iran. He demanded that they come to the table on all of their malevolent behavior. And what happened? Um, everything got worse. The Iran nuclear deal was a hallmark of the Obama administration, signed and enacted in 2015 with the express intent of preventing Iran from ever developing a nuclear weapon. The deal was designed in such a way that if Iran complied with it, they would be unable to make one. As Obama said in a statement, every pathway to a nuclear weapon is cut off. Here's what was in the deal. Number one, Iran would have to give up 97% of its enriched uranium. Number two, it would only be allowed to enrich the remaining uranium up to 3.67%, which is enough to use for nuclear energy. For comparison, if you want to use it for weapons, you would have to enrich it up to 90%. Number three, they would have to reduce their number of centrifuges from 20,000 to 5,000. And number four, they would be subject to invasive investigations by an international regulatory board called the IAEA. Iran agreed to all of this in exchange for relief from crippling economic sanctions. A few years later though, in 2018, President Trump decided he wanted out of the deal. I am announcing today that the United States will withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal. He had kept referring to the deal as bad without giving a whole lot of explanation as to what he thought was so bad about it. The grievances that he did have, for example, that there was an expiration on the deal or that it wasn't broad enough in scope, could have been worked out in further negotiations. Instead, he chose to pull out of the deal entirely. Now, many believe that this was just a part of Trump's efforts to undo the work of his predecessor. Others think that he was influenced by people in his immediate circle, specifically Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and National Security Advisor John Bolton, the latter of whom has been advocating for war with Iran for decades. But there was also Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. For context, Netanyahu didn't like the idea of a stronger Iran because it threatened the stability of the Middle East. When Trump pulled out of the deal, he cited Israeli intelligence that, despite reports from the IAEA, asserted that Iran wasn't actually complying with the deal and that they were hiding secret nuclear weapons. The fear at that point was that the U.S.'s integrity would be compromised in future diplomatic efforts, and of course that Iran would just start back up their nuclear program again, which they did. Trump also said that he would renegotiate a better deal, which he never did. In a tweet from Iran's foreign minister, he told Trump, We had a deal when you entered office. He also mentioned that the other countries involved never left the table, and then he went on to say, Your advisors, most fired by now, made a dumb bet up to you to decide when you want to fix it. Now, the Biden administration is trying to get back into a deal with Iran, but as could be expected, Iran is a little bit hesitant. For one, they will not accept a deal that doesn't completely remove Trump's sanctions. But because of the nature of those sanctions, that could be a little bit tricky. Two, they've refused to meet with Washington for face-to-face -face talks until the US first gives them a deal that they like, that they can work with. There's been some movement here though, because they've recently said that they would be open to meeting for negotiations, and this is a huge deal. There are also ongoing negotiations regarding four Iranian Americans who are being held in Iran. Those negotiations over there are affecting these negotiations over here. And finally, Iran wants a guarantee that the US will not pull out of the New Deal like we did the first one. While we can definitely understand why they would ask for something like this, it's still an unrealistic ask when striking a deal of this magnitude. Iran's new willingness to meet with the U.S. indicates progress on this front, which is good. They weren't willing to negotiate with the Trump administration, so maybe they'll be better with the new administration.